The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right. Well, we're ready to kick off the Kindle React R2 2019 release webinar. Um, thank you for joining us today, everyone. My name is Eric, and uh, I definitely thank you for your interest in Kindle React and joining our uh, panel discussion today. Uh, it's going to be myself, uh, my colleagues John Bristow and Carl Bergenham. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover all of the changes, all the new components, and uh, everything that you should know about in the Kindle React R2 release. As well, we'll cover some uh, different items about the ecosystem, the React ecosystem, uh, the community. So uh, let's go ahead and get on with it. And I just want to let you guys know that if you want to find out more information on Kindle React, it's as easy as typing in kindoreact.com, so visit us online there. We have really good documentation. Um, that's actually something I've been talking about with a lot of the people that I've met out at the conferences and that I've uh, talked to on Twitter that are using Kindle React already or that have uh, had the opportunity to do so, uh, how great the documentation is, how easy it is to uh, use. So please uh, go online, check that out. We have a lot of Stackblitz demos. Those are for... Uh, Basically, every component that we have, we have uh, many features for each component, and usually for each feature, we have some type of a Stackblitz demo. Um, also, uh, you'll find uh, those Stackblitz demos for uh, all of our components, again, for all of the features. And uh, if you have something that you uh, don't know how to do, always reach out to us. We can probably help you find a demo that's maybe not very easy to find, but we have uh, lots of other demos that show kind of uh, edge case features as well. So just wanted to note that. Uh, you can reach us on Twitter at Kindo React. And uh, that's where you can find myself and the rest of the engineering team, marketing folks, uh, everyone who is part of the Kindle React team. We're all available on Twitter. And please do not hesitate to uh, reach out to us, ask us any questions. Uh, we'd love to answer those questions, um, not just here in the webinar and today, but uh, anytime that you want to reach out to us. So today, uh, we are going to be taking questions for the webinar, which we'll answer at the end of the webinar. All you have to do is uh, tweet on Twitter to hashtag HeyKindoReact, and we'll strive to go and answer all these questions at the end of the call, or at least uh, the best ones and the most uh, important ones that we feel are applicable to everyone. Uh, otherwise, we'll answer you uh, individually. Um, as well, everyone likes free, so um, as part of the question and answer, we will be giving away a free Kendo React developer license to whoever we deem to have uh, you know, some of the best questions. Um, and we always uh, work really hard to make sure we find out uh, who's asking the best and most important questions and uh, Again, we, we, we always try to give something away to those people for participating and being here today. So thank you very much again. Every once in a while in this webinar, you will see this screen. And if you would like to take a screenshot of it, write it down, I'll leave it up for a few seconds. But I just want you to know that this is where you can find all the resources and links for this webinar. Um, at the very top of that page, you will find um, a link to Actually, you'll find a link to Carl's blog, which is what's new in Kindle React uh, R2. As well, you'll find a link on there for the Kindle UI release webinar. Um, so we are doing this in two days from now. Uh, the difference in, in this webinar is that we go over all the changes in the major Kindle React libraries. And uh, you'll be able to get information on Kindle React, Kindle for Angular, uh, Kindle for jQuery and Vue. And uh, so, it's good to, uh, if, if you know anyone else that's missing this webinar, maybe let them know that this one's still going on and they can still find out about Kindle React as well as all of our other libraries. So what we're here to do today is talk about Kindle React. And uh, if, you are, if you're new with Kindle React or if you're not familiar, basically uh, Kindle React's been around for about a year. Um, it's not really the new kid on the block. It's more of kind of like the you know, mature Justin Timberlake, if we're going to, you know, talk about boy bands here, but <laughs> it's not, it's not new. We have other libraries. We've got uh, Kindle for Angular and Vue, like I said, but Kindle React has been around for about a year. It has a suite of UI controls and data visualization components, 
and they're all built from the round the ground up specifically for react um, so what you're going to find is you're going to find easily importable actual react components uh, basically when you go to our components page you'll be able to see uh, code to be able to import and use our components very easily we have zero dependencies on jQuery, which is always good to be able to tell your boss, hey, you know, this new library we're going to be working with doesn't require jQuery. And really, what libraries that use uh, React and Angular and stuff like that should require, uh, require jQuery. Not that there's anything bad with that. We also have a whole uh, jQuery library that you could use, but uh, Kindle React, again, we don't need to uh, depend on any of those things. And I, I feel it is kind of a selling point. Um, Again, I just want to stress uh, more about the docs and info that you can find on kindoreact.com. Here is a list of uh, actually all of the components that we have for Kindo React. I believe that they're all on here and this list is growing more and more each month. Um, if you've been to any of our webinars in the past, um, you know that they're usually focused around a release. But uh, what, I, what I'm here to tell you is that uh, that release is not a real release. We don't release all of these components at once. We slowly do it over time. Uh, so every month uh, and every week, there's constantly new components coming out and uh, hitting this components page on kindoreact.com. So you can uh, discover these things on your own uh, between releases by just hopping onto our docs page. Um, also, if you would like, uh, you can get a you can start a free trial to 30 day free trial where you have access to all of our support as well you can uh, ask questions to the DevRel team and we'll try to answer any of those questions uh, during your trial uh, and it's a good way to get uh, acquainted with Kindle react and to build demo to show your boss or whatever uh, as well you don't have to have a trial in order to uh, just download and, and and do a quick demo or to fork our stack blitz demos to to show other people you know about kindo react but uh, just know that there is an option through kindoreact.com to start a free trial and to get that 24 7 support for a month so i want to get to uh the meat of the webinar here which is all of the new features that we have in Kindle React. So right here you'll see a, a this is a succinct list. It's not a full list of everything that we've uh, brought out with this release, but it's it's the main points here. So the new things that we have are an editor, a date time picker, notification, slider, uh, sortable and draggable components, which are pretty awesome. And then we have improvements to the grids, um, templates for data input, um, UMD module support, so a lot of new things coming out and uh, what i would say is there is also uh, i'm going to keep on referring to an article that carl bergenham uh, wrote about what's new in kindle react r2 it again is a part of the resources in the links page that i give you and it's good to go ahead and go through that article and you'll find uh, links to all of the same stackless demos that i'm going to be showing today um, and you can you know Again, fork those and make them your own. And uh, they're very good for trying to figure out how to use Kindle React and the best way to use it, how to wrap it, how to manage state within those components, all that kind of stuff. The first thing I want to uh, talk about is the editor. It's basically a rich content uh, WYSIWYG environment that enables you to create, edit, and format rich HTML content. As you can see here, uh, all of my demos are gonna have this kind of look and feel here, they're just gonna be kind of an animation of some things that I recorded earlier. And um, yeah, so the editor is, uh, it's nice because the thing I like most about the editor is, is a few things, is the kind of the undo and the redo capabilities and the ability to use the keyboard. As with all of our components, uh, you can always use the keyboard, but it just, it, it feels like a nice uh, text editor and uh, you, know, you can do bolding, um, underlining and all that with a you know your keyboard and not ever having to use the mouse so i really like that another thing that i would uh show on the editor is the ability to uh get the raw html generated by the editor at any time and so right here what you're seeing is a demo where uh we actually have this up on stack blitz and we uh show you how to do this it makes it very easy to make sure that at any time 
that the output of that content area of the editor above is easily accessible to you to save to a database, uh, parse, do whatever you want with. As well, you can set the HTML and post it back to the content uh, editor or the editor's content area. So uh, I also wanted to show you a little bit of how to use the editor. It's very simple. Um, here is actually the editor component. And you'll notice uh, what I really want to show is the tools section. Now, if, you, if we go back here, you'll notice that I just have a small uh, tool section at the top. It just has bold, italic, and underline. So if that's all you want in your editor, you just pass an array of arrays to the tools prop. And in, in here, you, you see that we're only passing one array and that's bold, italic, and underline. Um, those are all editor tools that we've destructured from above there and, it may, and made them available to our component. So right there, that, those, that is what gets you those uh, tool items in your toolbar. And we'll go to a little bit more complex uh, editor view here. Now what you're gonna see here is that we have multiple uh, groups of tools and uh, kind of the same animation as before, just me showing you how easy it is to work with the editor. We'll let that play for a second here. But um, the code I'm gonna show you next will show you how you can pass multiple arrays to that tools prop uh, for the component in order to uh, have different groups of tools. So as you can see here at the top, we have uh, imported all, or sorry, destructured all of the items that we want to use from the editor tools and added them each as a separate array and kind of organized them how we want them to show up inside the toolbar. Super easy to work with. Uh, you can throw an editor down and have uh, all the different tool sets you want in a matter of minutes. Um, very easy to do. Next component up is the date time picker, which is a brand new component. Um, one of the things that I always tell people, that the, the two components that I love the most uh, in Kindle React are the grid and the date pickers. Uh, the date pickers, because we just have so many ways of being able to select dates, whether it's from an input, a masked input, a, um, a drop down that just has the month. Um, maybe you wanna do a date range, maybe you wanna do date range with time, um, date time. Uh, so the date time picker, what I'm showing you here, is, uh, and, and I'll note that I am not using any mouse to interact with this component. This is all tabbing and uh, using arrow keys and enter keys to select the date and the time. It gives you a nice little user interface. I believe I'm using the material theme here on all of my components. So what you're gonna be seeing is the material version of our themes. Um, and again, uh, sometimes you don't just wanna pick a date, but you wanna pick a date and a time and everything and this component now allows you to do that inside Kindle React. Of course, we've had uh, a lot of these date time components with some of our other libraries that you may be familiar with, um, but we are really starting to round out all these uh, features that haven't been available in Kindle React, and we're starting to get them all in, and create parity with some of these other libraries that we have that have that are a little bit more fully featured. And I think that I think that we're pretty much there. So uh, it's a great time to be learning about Kindle React now that we have all these uh, amazing features and new components coming out. Notifications. Um, so yeah, notifications aren't really hard to create inside of your app, but why? You know, whenever you have, uh, whenever you have to build these things on your own, uh, you know, developers always say, well, I can, I can build notifications in a day and then test it the next day and it's basically done. Well, that's not always the case. There's bugs that come up, crop up afterwards and, you know, having to maintain uh, that yourself is, uh, is a big headache. So even the, the very simple components like uh, notifications is a big help to have as part of the library. And I think it's great. All of the notifications can be styled the way that you want. You can color it, you know, change the colors very easily, uh, change some of the basic styles around it very easily to match your application. The slider, slider is another new component. And as you're seeing here, we have a vertical slider, which we have, uh, We've put slider labels for basically every other number, and uh, the step value is one. So you can go from one to two to three to four to five 
but it only shows uh, you know the actual labels for uh, one, three, seven, ten, etc. So you can turn the buttons on, uh, the left and right buttons on and off. You can uh, obviously use this slider just with your keyboard controls. As you can see, I'm kind of flipping back and forth from a uh, the preview to the actual code and just you know turning the buttons off, um, changing it from vertical to horizontal, and all this stuff is very easy easily done. Uh, one of the things that I like to mention to people is that when you're dealing with vertical and horizontal, uh, you know, turning that on and off, remember that that's something that you can also do with um, kind of responsive behavior in your application. You can watch a certain breakpoint, and depending on whether you're maybe small or large or medium, you can flip that a different way and pass that into, uh, you know, ha have that uh, component work off of a value that's getting changed based off maybe the screen size. So, you know, they're very cool to work with. You can do lots of uh, nice things like that, like switch up whether it's vertical or, or horizontal. And I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna move on to another uh, slider demo here. This is a horizontal slider and it's controlled, uh, which means that I'm uh, kind of watching the state constantly on it. As you can see here, I'm adding the value. So I just added the values to each of the tick marks as well. I can remove it very easily right uh also since we're uh saving each the, the position when we let go to state right here i'm going to go ahead and add a little paragraph with some red text that's kind of uh sized really big so that you can see what the actual value that we've stopped on in this slider and it's you know very easy to do obviously and there we are kind of just moving through it with you know the forward and back buttons. Next, uh, these next two components are really cool because uh, this type of functionality, especially if it like the draggable functionality, at one point was not made available to uh, our customers in Kindle React, but it was something that maybe we could do behind the scenes as developers for developing our own uh, components. Uh, but now we're making these available. Here is the sort component, which uses draggable, which I'll show next. But as you can see, this is a way of making a list sortable. So you can have a list of items, uh, you know, maybe it's a, a JSON list of items like you see here that you give it as a default. And then as you move them around, it updates uh, that JSON. You can uh, save that out at any time, maybe to uh, update a Mongo database to uh, update the actual uh, order of the items or um, do a little bit more work behind the scenes and save it to a SQL database. Um, so it makes it very easy to uh, work with lists, move them around, save that order, do something with it. Here is just a really simple uh, animation of me using the drag component. It's nothing uh, too crazy, but the fact that we make this available as a component and that you can drag anything around, uh, I think is pretty cool. Um, this, uh, we're, we're going to get to the grid component now, and what I'm going to tell you about this feature right now is that this is not new. This is something that we've had for almost as long as the library has been out, the ability to virtually scroll through a grid. Now, the reason why this is so important is that uh, building line of business applications and building internal applications, you often run into the, uh, the case where you have a grid with just a ton of uh, rows in it, and the it's very, it's not performant at all. And one of the problems that we've ran into with both Angular and React in the past is that if you try to render too many rows at once, you're gonna severely affect the performance of your application, as well as you're usually looping over these rows, uh, which can cause a lot of problems. So the best way to handle this is by doing virtual scrolling. And basically what you see on the screen is the only thing rendered to the DOM. We can check out if we F12 and kind of look into um, this component here, you will see that there is a body with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 rows, which I've set uh, in the code to, you know, only provide 10 rows at a time. And as you can see, I'm scrolling through what are thousands of rows here. I believe we have 10,000 rows or more, 50,000 maybe. And as I scroll through them, it's just swapping out those 10 rows in my DOM, which is a very a uh, very easily performant thing to do inside of a, an application like React. 
What would be a lot harder to do would be to scroll through thousands and thousands of rows and to render out the content for each of those rows all at once. So again, this is nothing new, but the reason I show you is because what we have come out with now is column virtualization. So as you can see in the animation right now, I am scrolling just as I was before and the exact same thing is happening. But as I go to the bottom down here, now I'm, now I'm scrolling through columns. And again, the same thing is happening here. If we inspect, we will see that as I scroll horizontally, that specific row is just swapping out all of its TDs, uh, all of its cells with the proper column that it, that it should be on at that point in time, and it's getting that from the data. So um, whether you're scrolling vertically or horizontally now, you now have uh, virtualization in both directions. So how easy is that to add to your your grid? Like, is this gonna be hard to add to the grid? Is this gonna be something very, uh, that's not easy to do? Uh, that's not the case. Our team has uh, gone take care of all the hard work uh, behind the scenes for you under the hood. And in order to add this to your existing grid, obviously you would have to have the latest update. Um, it's just uh, to get the functionality both ways is these two props right here. You got column virtualization, which uh, is the new one. You just set it to true. Um, scrollable, which is the one that's been around for a while. If you set it to virtual, you will also get the uh, virtualization in the uh, up, up and down direction. Next, we have, uh, again, not a new component, but new features to our tree component, which, uh, you know, we've got a lot of drag and drop stuff going on right now. We're making it available to you. So they've also made it available inside the tree component. Notice how I can change the order of the items in the tree list. Um, as well, I can embed, uh, I can pull items into a category so I can change what category they're in. Um, we have some really good demos on uh, how to work with this as well as the checkboxes, which is another uh, new feature. Um, so checking individual items, having the checkbox next to the tree list uh, instead of uh, the other icons that might be available, you know, having a checkbox instead is available now. Um, as well, if you check out that article, the article uh, from Carl, which shows everything new in Kendo React R2, you will see a really cool, uh, you'll see this uh, demo here, but there's also on the same page as this demo is information on how to make sure that when you check uh, a, a parent item that all child items can get selected. So we've got demos and tutorials to show you how to do all of those things. We're not just dumping this on your lap and telling you to figure out how to do it yourself we provide uh, a lot of good articles, uh, blogs, and demos on how to do that thing. Um, really quick, uh, before I uh, pass it on to John, I wanna talk about a few things, which are some articles and um, a little bit of the React ecosystem. You can find all of our blogs for Kindle React on blogs.telerik.com. And um, here are some of the blog titles that we have that are on and about the React uh, ecosystem. Um, a lot of these articles are ones that I've written, but there's also a lot more on our blog that uh, other people have written, um, people outside of the Kindle React team. So if you just search our blogs for React, you're gonna find a lot of content there. And so since we've uh, uh, had our last webinar, I've updated the sales dashboard. Um, article as well as I've, I've created several new articles about uh, working with React just as a whole, not even uh, Kindle React, but just working with React. We have some other uh, React related articles. Um, if you really want to figure out, get a get your uh, pulse, uh, get the pulse of what's going on in React and JavaScript, we have a, a wonderful article on that. Um, you can check out our R1 webinar recap, which is very good for uh, figuring out what components were released last time. And you can check out what we've been doing as a team going out to some of the community events like uh, React Amsterdam and React Europe. And I would actually say that if, uh, what we're trying to do on the DevRel team is we are trying to make ourselves available at all these major React events so that uh, as you, you know, people that are using our product go out to these events. Um, if you go to one of the major ones, most likely we're gonna be there. You're gonna have someone you can talk to and it's fun. Um, 
you can find again all this information on the link here, which I'm going to keep on. I'm going to show one or two more times. And uh, I did want to show you a few uh, pictures. This is our, our team out at uh, React Amsterdam, and uh, more recently React Paris, which was an amazing event. We held a hackathon where we had some people hack on a demo project of ours to win some prizes. Um, I also want to let you know that we're going to be out at React Loop. I'm going to be there in Chicago at the end of this month. Um, a lot of our team will be at React Rally. Again, you can find this information and more uh, at blogs.telerik.com and kind of uh, keep, uh, keep tabs on what we're doing out in the community. And uh, I wanted to kind of leave you uh, right now with uh, like what's coming up in React and what should I be uh, aware about? Because, you know, if if you're a customer from Kindle React, we don't just want to uh, be giving you a lot of information about the, our components and docs and all that kind of stuff, but we also want to be talking to you about, you know, what you should be thinking uh, about in React uh, going forward uh, in the next year. One of the things that I would highlight is React Fire, which is uh, basically going to be, uh, I would just say to go to this article that's part of the links resources that we've uh, created for you and just check out what are some of the new things coming to the React DOM. Um, this last uh, version 16X was all about uh, rebuilding the internals of uh, React and creating better developer experiences. We've seen those developer experiences come out over the last year with hooks, suspense, lazy loading, and all this kind of stuff. Um, now you're gonna see them start to tighten the screws on other parts of the framework like the DOM and getting things right uh, you know, internally in, in React. So read more about this. Another thing I should, I think you should keep your eyes on is Next.js. If you're uh, familiar with things like Create React App, uh, this is kind of uh, a next step. Um, it's going to provide things like server rendering by default, um, automatic code splitting for faster page loads. Um, web, it's going to, it's going to have web. It uses Webpack in the background able to implement uh, an Express or Node.js HTTP server, uh, so all that kind of stuff. So keep your eye on Next.js. Also, if you're building applications in React, it's it's best to uh, check out our demo that we've created in the article here that is What's New in Kindle React that I've mentioned several times by Carl Bergenham, and there will be a uh, demo in there that actually shows how to work with Next.js and React, uh, Kindle React components. Really quickly, I want to mention Kindle UI TV. If you need to, uh, if you want to, if you learn better through videos, we have a lot of videos on Kindle UI TV, uh, not only on Kindle React, but on some of our other libraries as well. So um, with that, I will uh, show you this slide one more time just to give you the chance to screenshot it. And I, I'm going to go ahead and pass uh, off to John Bristow, who's from our developer relations teams, who's going to talk a little bit more about the ecosystem. And uh, yeah. Thanks a lot, Eric. Hi, everyone. Uh, I've been watching a lot of your questions come in over the chat window. It's been great to see. Um, yeah, keep coming with those questions. They're they're great to. They're really encouraging to see what you folks are doing with Kendo React and some of the interesting ways in which you're applying Kendo React to your own environments. I did want to spend a couple of minutes here talking a little bit about some of the things that we're thinking about. Um, we've had a lot of requests come in from customers regarding Kendo React itself and also how it can be used with other broader tools in the ecosystem. And so I wanted to do um, sort of a, a lap around some of the things that uh, I've been working on as well as others um, as sort of a reference to that. Um, and so in order to do that, I'd like to just talk a little bit about some of the things that we're doing um, around Kendo React relative to the ecosystem, uh, the larger ecosystem with uh, React, uh, Kendo React itself. Uh, Eric, can you go ahead and make me a presenter or I'm just gonna- Oh, yep, sorry about that. Myself, actually. That's okay, I'll make myself a presenter, there we go. Sorry so I'm that. gonna go ahead and, um, that's fine, talk a little bit about this. And, and one of the ways in which we're thinking about targeting um, the, the ecosystem itself is by closing some of the parts and pieces that 
we know exist out there. So um, to kind of give an example of to as to why this is important, I wanted to just give you a scenario. So oftentimes you'll use um, the components that we build in, in the context of a larger application. So this is an example application we built, uh, probably the best looking version of Northwind that you'll ever see. Uh, Northwind is a sort of traditional fictitious database from Microsoft. But um, in this page, you'll see that we have an individual component at use, which is a drop down uh, for a calendar. And this is often a too common scenario that you see with applications where you're using an individual component, but you want to test out the capabilities of that component as an individual component itself. And so um, the reason why for this is because obviously components work in different scenarios, right? Whether it's a, com a, a component used in conjunction with other components or a component using in, in different contexts, like for example, uh, a, a right to left or left to right scenario, different locales, different cultures, et cetera. And so being able to test out these components in isolation can sometimes be a challenge. And so we know that in the large ecosystem around React, um, there's been a lot of work done around testing out components, working with components individually. There's great tools for this, great developer tools, et cetera. One of the tools that we've been looking at recently or um, I've, I've been playing around with recently is one called Storybook. If you haven't seen this yet, um, you can go check this out. It's available up online at storybook.js.org. This is an open source tool for developing UI components in isolation. Um, it supports a wide variety of languages, including React, uh, so you can use it there. And the reason why I like it so much is because it allows you to build UI components in a very organized and efficient manner. And so one of the things I just wanted to show you is some of the work that I've been doing around Kendo React in conjunction with Storybook. So these are a set of controls that are running within a Storybook uh, context. And so Storybook's really nice sort of environment for testing controls. And you can see here, I've got the uh, calendar control loaded within Storybook. And I've got a bunch of add-ons that are also running as well. Uh, for example, the knobs add-on, which allows you to tweak the behavior of each component individually. So you can change the default view, you can turn on the week number, things like that. Um, the nice thing also about Storybook through these add-ons is you can get a whole range of various capabilities um, at your disposal. So I can take a look at all the events that have been raised through the actions add-on. Uh, I can see the, the underlying source for this, as well as the prop types for the individual component. And so these and other capabilities that you're, you're seeing here are, are great for use in the context of frameworks like Tender React. And I just wanted to mention this here in terms of the larger ecosystem, that these are things that we're very much paying attention to. And uh, we're, we're very much uh, looking forward to um, playing around with as we as we look more into the ecosystem. Uh, this is based on the great feedback that we've heard from you. So please keep that feedback coming. And if you're not aware, we do have a feedback portal that you can go ahead and check out. If you've got any feature requests or any questions or anything like that that you'd like to say, say to, to the engineering team, hey, it'd be great if, if, if this component did X or Y, uh, that would be a great place for you to start. So with that, um, I'll go ahead and now hand it over to Carl, who's gonna talk a little bit about what's coming up on our exciting roadmap with uh, Kendo React. Perfect, thank you, John. So I don't have all these lovely slides to cover exactly everything that we're doing on the roadmap, but I figured uh, keeping the slide up here and doing kind of a, a quick overview of, of where we're going uh, with the Kendo React components uh, can make a lot of sense. So uh, a, a couple of things that we can talk about. Uh, that are happening. Uh, one of the biggest components that we're looking to introduce uh, within the next couple of months is the scheduler component. So you might be familiar uh, about our scheduling component from the jQuery side, from the Angular side, as that's being actively developed, and we're introducing the same set of features and functionality into React. This is a big component, so of course, uh, we have a ton of features that we want to cover. We might not be able to get them all with V1. However, it is one of the major components that we're looking forward to introducing into the React suite. Uh, on top of this, uh, we'll also, of course, continue to go down the road of introducing some other couple new components. So for example, i will be looking at a color picker component alongside with the drawer widget, which uh, I think everybody is more or less uh, familiar with uh, now. Uh, this particular roadmap page that, that we have up here indicates uh, kind of some of our long-term vision alongside with what we have been talking about so far. Uh, and this page will be updated uh, as of today or tomorrow uh, with, with the uh, details that we're covering here. But um, the long-term 
uh, kind of uh, idea that we have still is in place, right? We have a couple of other uh, major components that we'll be targeting going down the road, but and the schedule that happens to be one of them, drawer and color picker happen to be uh, some of the other popular ones, and of course, continuing to add features and functionality into existing widgets. So you can bet uh, some money on the fact that the grid's going to uh, receive some additional uh, features uh, and improvements there, uh, alongside with uh, any one of the other existing components as well. Uh, so you'll be able to see even in more details around that as the roadmap page gets updated. Excellent. All right. So just to reiterate, um, if you want to go ahead and check out that roadmap, you can go ahead and do so by looking at this following URL. Uh, you can also just Google uh, Kendo React Roadmap and you'll find that there. Eric, I'll switch it back over to you. All right, I guess I gotta take myself off mute. Um, all right, can everyone see my screen here? Yes, we can. All right. So we've heard about the new components. We've heard a little bit about the ecosystem, some of the blog articles and that kind of stuff. Um, we've also heard a little bit about the roadmap and what's coming in Kindle React um, in the future. Um, so the last thing we have left to do here is talk about uh, some of the questions that were asked through the Hey Kindo React uh, Twitter hashtag. And uh, so I'm gonna go through the list here. I might uh, reach out to Carl or John or maybe even our engineering team on some of these questions, but I just wanna go see if I can get through a majority of these questions. And uh, so this will kind of uh, lead us out of the webinar. And I'm gonna leave this link up on the screen so that you guys can see that and uh, take a look at it if you want to, because a lot of these questions will be answered actually through that link and just going through Carl's article, but I'd like to try and go ahead and uh, take care of some of them here. So. Uh, are there any ways to subscribe to the releases so that we know the latest and greatest things? Um, of course, there uh, are uh, ways to subscribe to Kindle React and, and uh, some of the notifications, but as well, I think uh, what Carl noted is to just search for Kindle React changelog, and that's gonna, uh, that's gonna show all the different releases and everything that's been coming out, uh, and that's the best way to keep tabs on kind of what's new in Kindle React. As well, you can um, follow me on Twitter, and I'm constantly uh, tweeting out all you know stuff that's new with Kendo React. Um, I did notice that the audio cut out a few times. Um, that was someone else's question. We are gonna have this webinar recorded. So uh, I believe if you're just signed up, you should get a link to the video and some type of an email. That's what happens with me. I'm hoping it happens with the viewers as well. If not, we'll have it up on our Kendo UI TV. Uh, as, as soon as possible so that you can watch it there. Um, someone else was asking uh, that they use jQuery right now and will they be able to seamlessly transition to the React editor? Um, so there's a lot of feature parity between the, the editor widget and the Kindo UI for jQuery editor. Uh, and uh, But as with anything, I think you're gonna have a little bit of trouble anytime you're going from something uh, like jQuery uh, in JavaScript over to uh, either Angular or React and building it uh, from scratch there. So there's gonna be a little bit of a, a difference there just because of the way that uh, these libraries work under the hood. Uh, so I don't know if that completely answers your question. And I also wanna let my colleagues know that if they wanna chime in at any time uh, to help answer these questions, uh, just let me know. Um, sure. Are there any mobile demos of the new components like the WYSIWYG editor? So most of the stuff that we do on our demo pages and in Stack Blitz will work in um, mobile. Um, the one thing I would tell you from working with these components in the past is that sometimes you have to uh, you have to pass the right properties uh, uh, or, or yeah properties into the pro Kendo React component props uh, and kind of uh, again hinge those on whatever's happening in your breakpoints and whatever's keeping track of your breakpoints and the size of your pages. That's one thing that you can do uh, as well. Just resizing it to fit for a mobile usually will help. Um, sometimes you're, you're not going to be able to display a grid uh, well in a mobile uh, sense, but that's just because grids don't work well on mobile. Um, so uh, maybe you can choose a list view instead or something else. So that those are my tips. That's more of a, a kind of, a design challenge uh, 
these components are are built to work on mobile but if you use them in the wrong way of course they're not going to um, look amazing right you have to you have to work on that um, what about the wizard or progress bar component uh, we haven't added them yet but they're uh, you know these are components that we are we definitely want um, one of the things that we do is we theme for material and bootstrap um, and the reason is because a lot of our customers use Kendo inside of uh, of those front end uh, libraries and, and those front end frameworks. So those front end frameworks typically have these types of features. Uh, it is something that we would we would like to add and and give you as part of uh, some of the stuff we're doing with layout, kind of uh, that that goes around the components, right? Uh, in your in your website or in your application, there's the components, and then there's the stuff that kind of happens outside of those. We're working more and more. Um, each release to kind of release more features like that for you. Are there any immediate plans for adding new Kendo jQuery drawer component to Kendo React? Uh, yes, it's in our plans. Uh, should happen in the second half of the year. Keep an eye out. By the way, by the way, I'm answering all of these uh, questions because Carl's already answered them. So I don't want you guys to think that I'm just like a super smart. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm being fed these these answers. So just just letting you know that. Um, much I was much props to Carl. Too. Come on, don't throw me. Under okay, the bus. <laughs> John too. So, uh, but yeah. I'm just I'm just trying to uh, read them back to here. So, is there a Kindle React scheduler component? Yes, it's in our roadmap. And um, not only that, but um, our engineers are working tirelessly on the scheduler. It's one of the next big things that's going to come out. Um, obviously, I can't tell you when it's going to come out, but uh, hopefully it's very soon. Um, we've been developing a project since 2017 when only Kindle React wrappers were available. What do you suggest? Uh, no need to rewrite that part of your app. Um, it's kind of like with hooks, right? Like whenever you use uh, hooks, you don't have to rewrite all of your old class components. You can kind of uh, pepper it in as you like to. I would say the same thing goes with um, kind of using the Kendo wrappers with um, our components. Uh, you can use them separately. Um, things that you need to be aware of anytime that you're using multiple libraries is dead code, dead CSS that's not being applied or that's being kind of uh, that's their double so there's a lot of good um tools out there that can help you to weed that stuff out uh, i don't think you would need it in this case but just one of those things to uh, be careful of when you start mixing too many libraries sometimes there is overlap uh, when it comes to styles and things like that so um, i don't think it would be a problem with that in that scenario though i want to use kendo react wrapper with the kendo react component is that a good idea uh sure you can do that is there a drop target to go along with the new draggable? Um, do we have Kareel on the line? Does he know about that question? Is there yeah, a yep. drop target? Uh, I was here? Just that up. We... Hey, go ahead. Okay, so for the uh, for the draggable component, we have an event which is explaining exactly what happened to the component from where you started to where you're dropping it. So yeah, you should have this in the event uh, arguments. Okay, great. And um, so that you should be able to, if you have something else on the page that has boundaries, you should be able to know if it's been placed uh, inside of that item or overlapping it or hitting it. That's is, I think that's kind of what, what he's asking. Does that uh, seem like something that's easy to do? I guess you're pretty much just comparing uh, where it got dropped to maybe uh, coordinates of something else. Anyways, um, so next question. Uh, it, it seems like it's it's something that's that's doable. Maybe we can uh, find out if we can get a demo for that uh, and and put that out on the Dragwell page. Um, maybe that's something we can work on. Are there any plans to bring React Native into the mix? Uh, not really. I mean, when when you think about React, Kindle React and React Native. Um, it doesn't really make sense to make uh, components for React Native. However, there are things in the future coming out like React Native Web that might, uh, there, there's eventually in React, there's going to have to be some type of um, the ability to use like text and image 
components and things like that across uh, across multiple platforms. Um, but right now, I don't think we have any. Um, uh, we're not going to be using Kindle React with uh, React Native or uh, showing how to do something like that. It doesn't seem like it's something that would really be uh, something you'd want to do, or that would be even applicable. Um, is there any nested grid available in Kindle React? Yeah, check out the master detail grid, the demo. Uh, you can just search for um, Kindle React grid, um, either master detail or hierarchy. And I'll try to make sure that uh, all of the links that are from these questions, I'll highlight them and put them in the link that you see on the screen right now. I'll have to update it after the webinar, but those will be there as well. So you'll have a link to that actual master detail grid. Um, I'm using it. I'm existing. Uh, I'm existing using for jQuery an Angular version, but I'm not able to find the same component in React. Yeah, all of the all of our libraries are kind of evolving on their own, and they don't all have complete parity with each other. So just know that on the Kindle React team, we are uh, gauging what is most important to our users, making those available first. As well, we've been developing co components for JavaScript for quite a while now, and we have an idea of what things uh, need to be uh, released priority. Uh, for instance, we can't release an editor without first releasing a toolbar, or at least working on a toolbar first, uh, and, and, and things of that nature. So there is there is a method to uh, the way things get released. We're trying to uh, create parity with the other frameworks as quickly as possible, but it does take some time, and those things happen independent of each other for each of our different libraries. Um, another question here, I wrote an app when it first came out, version four, uh, you were, they were using version four. What about upgrading? The biggest changes um, are related to support for React versions and the API. Um, we now require React 16.8 or latest version of React to work with the new versions of Kindle React. Um, I think I got that one right. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone else, but that seems to be the case. If you're going to be upgrading, you might need to be supporting a higher version of React 16.8 to be specific. I would assume that that's because of the changes with things like hooks um, and in that in that in that kind of uh, vein. You know, uh, we can't uh, build components. I think that work with those types of features without supporting without having you support the same React feature uh, or React version. Um, however you can use older versions of Kindle React if you absolutely had to, uh, if you can't bump up to that version. Please send a recording session if possible. Absolutely, we will post that to our YouTube channel. Uh, do we have any option to configure at mention user feature or is this in the plan? Yeah, this uh, feature is not in the editor, but you can suggest things. Um, as I guess it's a good reason, a, a good way to, um, tell people about our feedback for Kindle React UI. There is a uh, web address feedback.telerik.com slash kendo react UI, which I'll also make available in the link that you see here on your screen. So uh, I'll, I'll make sure to put that in there. Um, why are we not having sessions of Kendo in India on site? I don't know. <laughs> That, that question was not answered, and uh, I didn't even realize that there was an answer here before asking it. So uh, I'm trying to understand exactly what he's asking. Why are we not having sessions of Kendo in India on site, like in Bangalore? Hmm. Um, I, I know that we're trying to get out to India more often. I have uh, some ideas to go out there for uh, possibly in the next year for some conferences, but. Uh, Maybe if you want to reach out to either myself or John Bristow or uh, to ask those types of questions, we can definitely help you out. Can we format date and text box for date time control? Currently, it's showing as date, date, month, month, year, 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 year. But I suppose if I wanted to show it as another format uh, after the date selection, mm, so you can change the format property at any time. Um, I'll provide a link to the date picker. Uh, there's a TOC format page, which will make uh, understanding what to do in that situation a breeze. 
does the pure Kindo React Grid now implement all of the functionality of the jQuery and Grid Wrapper? Um, at this point, all the small features are there. Um, there's a few edge cases that aren't there, but uh, I think for the most part, you're going to find that they're very similar. Um, we're, we currently have a Kindo UI license. We do we have to purchase a new Kindo React license? Hmm. So Kindo UI is a bundle that includes the UI libraries for jQuery, Angular, React, and Vue. So you wouldn't need a new license if you already have a Kindo UI license. So to rephrase that question, they have a Kindo UI license. Do they need to purchase a new license for Kindo React? Most likely um, it's already a, a part of your license. You shouldn't need to. Is there a more detailed development roadmap? And he points to the roadmap that he's found here. Um, no, that's the right one. However, we will be making updates to that roadmap page to um, make it more fully featured, to uh, focus more on uh, all the things that are coming out in Kindle React and to, uh, just to just to make it better. So Carl's working on that and uh, and that should be something that you see very soon. Is it is Kindle React component storybook available somewhere? So uh, what John is doing is he's he's basically just spinning up a, a storybook project and then adding all of our components to it, which uh, anyone can do. But he's actually working on that and he's going to be making it available uh, very soon. And you can you actually, can actually sorry, look. Sorry on GitHub. I, sorry to yeah. sorry to interrupt. Sorry no on problem. GitHub. So I, uh, I responded to that individual and um, if you just uh do a search on github for kendo react storybook you should find it there and um as eric rightly pointed out um, i'm just adding components to it so again it's just a something a little project i'm working on right now but it's um kind of one of those things that we see customers ask for once in a while and uh, uh it's where folks like myself and eric uh find the time to kind of play around with so this is something that will obviously uh, be ongoing but uh feel free to go check that out yeah, so John, if I could ask you a question real quick, where do you see, uh, like, if, if someone came and picked up your storybook demo and, you know, took mm -hmm. it to work with them, wh what do you see, how do you see that being helpful to them or their colleagues or whoever else? Um, like, what's the purpose of kind of having all those Kindle React components loaded into storybook? Sure. So uh, in addition to what I showed, um, which is just kind of like that hosting container, um, there's a whole bunch of things that, that come along for the ride in Storybook through what are called add-ons. So there are accessibility checks that you can run on components, uh, individual nice. components. There's uh, knobs that you can tweak. You can change values. So rather than having to write the code yourself, you can actually just walk up to the Storybook, kind of turn this knob up, turn that knob down. And um, it, you can see how the, the components themselves adjust accordingly. Um, so there's other add-ons I'm... I'm yeah, go if ahead. I wanted to show someone else how, you know, all the different features of the grid very easily by turning some different knobs and changing a few values that affect how that thing looks uh -huh. and works on the screen, this is the way to do it, a very easy way to do it. This is one of many ways. Now, we try and write our demos, obviously, that showcase those things, and we have individual demos to showcase those those things, but they're, 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 they're not only um, the demo, but also the code. So for some folks, that may be too much, right? They, they, they get lost in all the demos and docs, and that's fine. Um, for those folks who are just looking at for features, this is one of many ways to do it. I'm not saying this is the only way, but this is something that a lot of people have asked about. And because Storybook seems pretty popular in the React ecosystem right now, I thought it would just be fun to take some of our components and start yep. um, putting them in there. And seems to be um, seems to be working quite well. So I'll continue to work on it. Yeah, I think it's for very valuable, and it's, it's it's a good way to show off what our components can do in a very easily kind of you know just you know again clicking knobs and changing little values, and and it just shows how how that component changes on the page immediately. It's it's very reactive. Um, also, another question here, virtual scroll is server-side, let's see, virtual scroll is server-side pagination or client-side? It can be both. So if you're working uh, server-side and client-side or doing server-side rendering with React, uh, I don't think that you're gonna have a problem um, using the virtual scroll, loading data, uh, 
performing server-side logic or client-side logic. When we use wrappers and components together, won't there be a CSS conflict? Uh, no, the components, uh, they share CSS, which means the theme can work uh, across both jQuery and React, if that's what you're saying. If you're if you're using both of them, um, where I guess uh, what I was talking about earlier is when you start pulling other libraries into the mix, like Material or Bootstrap, and you also have Bootstrap and Material themed uh, components. My my a point was to beware of all of the CSS that you're loading and make sure that you don't need to be stripping anything out because um, uh, any, anything extra that you load can cause uh, performance issues. But uh, it shouldn't be a problem with our stuff. We're pretty good about that. If you're just using two different versions of our library, yeah, you should be able to use the, the same CSS across both. When we use wrappers and components together, won't there, oh, let's see, I already uh, answered that one. Am I disconnected from the live stream? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, have recent grid updates added features that make it easier to work with the grid in responsive design, such as the fly hiding of columns? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> they do. Um, uh, let's go ahead and see what they answered here. It's very easy to work with a column collection to determine what to show or hide uh, and, and how to control it. We're working on a sample to make this easier to follow with responsive scenarios, but there's no issue doing that already. Um, short answer, yes. You can, you can uh, easily work with the grid and the updates to the grid make it very easy to work with responsive behavior in your application. Um, are there any plans to add an accessibility checker to the WYSIWYG editor? Uh, it's not on the immediate roadmap, uh, but you can actually add it to the feed, feedback portal and we will definitely take a look at it. Is Kindo React a, a wrapper of Kindo UI jQuery components? Uh, no, they've been completely re rewritten from the ground up from scratch. There are no dependencies on any of the jQuery UI Kindo stuff or any of the code. Um, understand that when we create Kindo React or Kindo for Angular, that we are creating these components from the ground up, um, redesigning them completely uh, architecture and everything, um, not depending on jQuery. Uh, so yeah, they're brand new. Uh, we have to rebuild them completely all over from scratch. I don't, I don't know how many times I'm gonna say from scratch there, but uh, just trying to get, drive that point home. Uh, um, that might be all of the questions that we have answers for. I'm still gonna try to make sure that we have uh, any really good uh, questions that are pertinent to everyone um, added to the uh, link that you see on the screen here. In some way, it'll be uh, probably at the very top of that document once I update it. So you'll have maybe a Q&A section where I link off to another dev.to article that answers all these questions. Um, so that's what I'm gonna try and do. I'm going to scroll up one more time just to make sure I'm not missing any questions that have been answered since I asked them. Now, oh, let's see here. Is there a place on the Kindle React website that lists the Kindle release in which minimum React release that is supported? Right now, this is a bit hidden across various articles, but we will make this easier over the next couple of weeks by creating a kind of system requirements page. Yeah. All right. I think I'm going to go ahead and conclude the Q&A session. I think we got a lot of good uh, questions answered. Remember that we are going to be uh, looking over all these questions and figuring out who asked uh, the best questions here. Uh, and we're going to be giving them a Kendo React license for a year. Um, so I hope that you enjoy that. Um, again, concluding our Q&A. And uh, thank you very much for joining our webinar today. And uh, I guess we'll see you uh, on our next R3 webinar. And thank you very much for coming. And thank you, John and Carl, for and also um, our engineering team and Kirill for coming and being a part of the call. All right. Thank you very much.